with Tasha DeLay. Welcome back to Chapter 17, The Revelation of the Mandala of the, Re the Wrathful Deities. So how do we apply this in terms of the actual practice? So here, uh, Samatabhadra presents the mandala of images that are the necessary supports and along with the mantras, which we've already done. So this chapter describes the supporting celestial palace and the mandala of wrathful deities within it. The palace is adorned with ornaments of skull snakes, corpses and light, and seats in the form of bull, buffalo, leopard, tiger and bear. And then we have the five harukas presented, the hand emblems and queens, the retinue that includes the 20 female wrathful deities, the Matara, the Pisachi, and the gatekeepers, along with the 28 Ishvari. So those are all terms that we're beginning to become familiar with as we go through this. The blazing mandala of the wrathful deities then radiates with the apparitions of the Buddha body, speech, and mind. So that's an overview here. So then moving forward from that, So we're looking at this as the support in the middle of the page there, having revealed the mandala of the secret enlightened speech, then the Bhagavan reveals the clouds of wrathful ones and their secret mantras. It is necessary to have a support for visualization. So the mandala provides that support for doing the visualization. Moving on to the next page, 618, then we have a detailed description of the Celestial Palace as the support. So beginning with the Celestial Palace itself, the five wisdoms in the blazing expanse of fire with no outer or inner dimensions, the substratum of the palace is a wheel with a hub and a rim connected by four spokes that indicate the nature of the five families to indicate the Four Noble Truths and the Four Immeasurable Qualities. This is adorned with four-sided foundation. Upon that, the indication of wisdom, celestial palaces, ever-increasing qualities is the square shape. The four doors are the four entranceways. In the center of the palace is the four-spoked wheel and its rim, indicating the five kayas. And then the eight doors to perfect freedom are indicated with the eight pillars. And then the two truths are indicated by how beautiful with both outer and inner colonnades. It'll be around on kind of on the outside on the portico there. The eight the height of the great skull walls is majestic. In the second paragraph, we have the ornaments then. So the walls are composed of fresh and dry skulls adorned with black serpents hanging in clusters. The gutters are skulls and serpents. The windows are the sun and the moon. The joists are Brahma and the pillars are human corpses. The capitals are tortoises, the rafters human corpses, the ceiling boards are animal parts, the roof is flayed human skin, the lattice work is intestines, hearts, and internal organs, the four entrance thresholds are tortoises, and the lentils are sea monsters. The doors are black serpents and human corpses. From the ends of the rafters are enhanced by the sun, the moon, constellations and sparks radiate from the tips of flames into the ten directions, creating massive garlands of fire and light. What a spectacle. <laughs> okay, then we have the seats. Those are distinguished by the animals upholding the thrones. The elephants indicate suppressing beings through splendor. The buffalo's great authentic presence, the leopard's great unruliness, the tiger's magnificent heroism, and the bear's natural ferocity. Moving on to the next page, we have the mandala of deities, and then below that, the principal ones, the way the principal ones abide. So first, the principal ones, colors, faces, and arms are described. Their colors and faces 
uh, are the delusion has been purified. The principal ones are maroon black. And then it gives some additional details there. Then going down mm, about four or five lines, the harukas in the center to the east, west, and north have white faces on the right. The one in the south has a dark blue face on the right. So they have three faces. So it would be the right, left, and center here. And so then we have um, the ones in the, the center, south, and north have red faces on the left. The east and west have yellow faces on the left. The sign of the wrathful enlightened activity has been perfected is that all the colors are magnified, are described as mingled with black. So they're dark versions of these colors. Their kayas appear in extremely frightening forms. Next, the fundamental nature of the faces and arms. So the three poisons are purified and the three kayas are realized. So they all have three faces. They have mastered the six wisdoms and liberate the six realms, beings through the six paramitas. So they have six arms. Their four legs uh, are taming the four demons. And then the next paragraph, their ornaments are the eight accoutrements of the glorious ones. The sign of having perfected the meaning of the great vehicle is the elephant's skin over the shoulders. Overcome the haughty ones, you have the human skin over the shoulders. Being free from duality, the tiger skin skirt, and including a variety of fresh skins as clothing. Next paragraph, the serpents are white royal class serpents as the crown. The golden noble class serpents are the earrings and necklace. The red rishi class serpents are armbands and long necklace. The green preta class serpents are the belt. The black untouchable class serpents are the bracelets and anklets. The skull malas are dry human skulls for the crown, semi-dry skulls for the neck, and the 51 fresh heads for the long necklace. The ornaments of the moon and sun are shining from the left and right shoulders, indicating illumination of method and prajna, or wisdom. Along with drops of blood, smears of fat, and dots of ashes, these total eight. There are also fresh hide, serpents, garlands of skulls, sun and moon, blood, fat and ashes as the eight accoutrements of the charnel ground. The roar of their mighty speech like the roar of a thousand dragons is extremely loud and terrifying and awesome sound that they make. Then we have their hand emblems. First with Buddha Guya and so he goes through um, all of that uh, and then uh, Rangpa or uh, Rangzong Pandita and describes that and says uh, a few lines down in accord with the Vajra magical manifestation is the way that they're being described here so I skipped over the other descriptions to focus on the way that they're being described in this text which is based on the Vajra magical ma manifestation all first right hands are as follows. Vajraharuka holds a nine-pronged Vajra. All families hold a five-pronged Vajra. In the middle right hands, in the middle left hands, they hold scalped human skulls filled with blood. Karma Haruka holds a sword in his right hand. Buddha holds an axe in his first right hand. Ratna holds an axe in his final left hand. And Karma holds a plow in his first right hand. Vajra and Karma hold small drums in their final left hands, symbolizing the entire trichiliocosm. And then we have Buddha Haruka holding a wheel in his first right hand, Radna a jewel, Padma a lotus, Buddha a trident in his final left, Radna the lasso of intestines in his first left hand, Vajra and Padma bells in their first left hands, and Padma the small drum in his final left hand. All of them hoist flayed human clubs in their final right hands holding their various hand emblems which are then described in that uh, quote. 
Then below that, the consorts. The consorts have one face and two arms. Their right arms embrace the males and their left hands hold skulls filled with blood presented to the mouths of the males. So that, next we have the arrangement of the retinue. And so we have the 20 wrathful females. The eight matara of the sacred grounds are the eight consciousnesses. To purify the eight, they are called the consorts of the sacred grounds. Skipping down to the next paragraph, we have the eight pisachi consorts that are the object of the five sense consciousnesses, form, sound, scent, savor, and corporality or touch. And then skipping down on the next page to the be the third paragraph, the stunning consorts of the four gatekeepers are the destruction of the four perverted demons sealed with the four wisdoms. And then skipping to the next paragraph, the arrangement of the 28 Ishvari. So we have the wives, courtesans, and servants are designated from the perspective of their service. They surround the mandala. They have all their individual corpse seats and hold their hand emblems. They approach and ask, what enlightened activity can we accomplish for you? And then it goes through a long list of each of them, what they're holding in their hands. So we'll skip over that for right now. To the last paragraph on that page, 622. The explanations in this chapter are not for a specific purpose aside from being practical. For those who draw tankas, practice meditation, and the like. So these are given to us so that we can use them in the visualization or if we're painting a Tonka painting or something like that to help clarify for us what each of them is holding. And then at the top of 623, the various signs. The signs are the space of the sky and the space of phenomena are completely pervaded by the blazing fire mandala of the wisdom wrathful ones as countless as particles in the universe. Everything appears as enlightened body, speech, and mind. So that's the sign that we're looking for. When everything appears as the uh, body, speech, enlightened body, speech, and mind, that is, is where we're going to be.